Welcome to Hochoka Podcast. What logs 3,000 miles to serve nearly 2,000 people to prevent the summer slide? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's St. Joseph's Indian School's Bookmobile, promoting literacy in Native American communities across the region for nearly a half century. Hello, Mataki Api, and welcome to Hochoka here at the center of St. Joseph's Indian School's campus. I'm Scott Wooster, today's Hochoka host. We're visiting with alumni liaison Andy Lepkowski and two University of Notre Dame interns who are with us this summer to ride along with the St. Joseph's Indian School bookmobile. We're going to start with Andy. So a warm welcome to Hochoka to you, Andy. Thank you. So Andy, you're in your 50th year here, and that's about as long as the bookmobile has been around. Uh, you came when you were 18 years old, and uh, we've known each other for, for a long time. Yes. You wear a lot of different hats here. Uh, today we're going to talk about the bookmobile, especially your history with the bookmobile, and then we're going to uh, meet a couple interns that you have this year. Okay. And uh, I'll get to talk to them, and we'll get to look at this through your eyes, and then we'll get to look at, at the bookmobile process through a couple of sets of fresh eyes, you know, folks mm -hmm. who are seeing it for the first time. Sure. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and, and uh, what you bring to this? Okay. And well, it all started when I first came in, in 19... Well, I was here before 77, but when I came in 1977, uh, that summer we did the bookmobile. Marvel Brinkman was the one that first started it, and she asked me to come along. We did it for maybe one or two years, and then I quit doing it. But then Father Cassidy in 1979, he... Uh, had some money donated from the Reading is Fundamental program. Okay. And he had a, a donor invest in a, in a reach-out van, and they took that out. I didn't go on that one, but that was a big event for St. Joe's back in 79. And then in 1998, we, we had, after that reach-out van got used, and it was old by the time mm -hmm. we got going, um, they replaced it with a smaller van, like a uh, bread loaf or a bread van that would, you know, sell bread. Yep. We got one like that, put shelves in it, and we used that for a bookmobile for many years. Okay. And then just recently, we just invested in a, a new truck and trailer, which we use right now, and it's working out really good. Right. Very nice. Yeah. Um, when you came in '77, there there was just. Uh, there were two vans that went out, two, two actually vans. small vans yes. with book, just books in the back. It yeah. started with very humble beginnings. Yes, very humble. And I mentioned in the lead-in, we I mentioned the word summer slide, and I summer slide basically means you know students learn during the school year, and they go off into the summer. You and I did the same thing growing up. I'm sure you get mm -hmm. into the summer. The last thing you want to do is study. You, last thing you want to do is want to read and it and it hurts uh when you come back to school in the fall because you have to relearn uh subjects and so um part of that that reading is fundamental or or rif the RIF program which has been around st joe's for a long time is to get those books in the hands of those kids in the in the summer yes because the reservations that we go to we go to all of them they don't have libraries so St. Joe's mm -hmm. wants to encourage the kids to keep reading during the summer, you know, summer months. Yep. So when they come back, they'll be ready to get back into school. We meet uh, all different types of people, and they've all been great. We meet alumni. I, I get to talk to a lot of alumni as well. But the main reason we're out there is to give out free books. Absolutely. And uh, we do. We give out a lot of books. So you, you, uh, how many communities do you go to? How many miles do you travel? Books? Uh, give me some data on this here. Okay, well, we, I know we travel 3,000 miles or more mm -hmm. We're all over South Dakota and some of North Dakota. Um, we give out anywhere between five to 10,000 books. Usually it's about 10,000 books. Wow, okay. To about 2,000 people. Okay. Kids and adults, all, all different ages. Okay. So you see a lot oh, of people lot during of people. the summer. Oh, That's yeah. great. And we see, and, and, and I do see a lot of alumni. But the main thing I think what we do too is, just lately, is we get the Native American books from this 
lady, her name is Lily Mendoza. Oh, sure. In yep. Rapid City. Yep. She's the one that uh, we buy books from that they go like hotcakes. Okay. We can't keep them on the table. Huh, nice. And uh, Native American authors, Native, Native American, American authors, themed Native American, books? Yes. Okay, very nice. I didn't know that. Um, it is a it is a traveling library. The bookmobile is yes. right. You're, I mean, basically that's that's what it is at, by definition. But it, I think it does a lot more than that too. And judging by the pictures that you send off and and just your connections with people after fifty years of working here and being in the state, it does a lot more than just give out books. What else? What else? Uh, what other functions does the bookmobile serve? Well, the bookmobile serves a number. Of to me, the number one function besides the books is the alumni. We, yeah. I get to see a lot of alumni, get to visit with them, mm -hmm. get all the information I need to get from them. Yep. And then we also give out food and, and drinks when they come because it's hot outside there. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're, you're uh, building relationships with uh, the communities around the state, yes. the native communities around the state. Which You'd be is, surprised how many don't know where St. Joe's Indian School is, yeah. even in South Dakota. Yeah, which, which all it does, you're right, it does surprise me. It stuns me that people don't know who we are yeah. and where we are and, and, and what we do here. Um, sometimes you get people who ride along with you or who come out and visit from St. Joe's that come out and, and are a part of that. Yes, we. I have some teachers come out. The yeah. librarian from St. Joe's comes with me a lot, and she's been really a blessing in disguise. I, I wouldn't know what to do without her. Yeah. Um, and we have FSC, social workers, that come out. Yep. So it's good for everybody, new house parents. Yeah. Anybody and everybody come out and visit yeah. and see the kids where, they're, where they live. I think that's a good opportunity for new staff to be able to come out and kind of meet some people mm -hmm. and get get uh, get an idea of what uh, what it's like in Indian country here in the state. You know, it's we get sometimes a little insulated or insular here at uh, at St. Joe's, and and it's good to get out and see the communities. You also distribute some materials to various uh, clubs when you go out. Yeah, uh, girls and boys clubs. We okay. give them uh, besides books. We also give them. Rec the rec center has donated some equipment for me to give to them, so yeah. we also do that. Yeah, admissions personnel also go out sometimes, just because we're always looking for kids who might mm -hmm. want to come to school here, who have a need to come to school here, and they go along, and and families can come and talk to the admissions. Yeah, person. They, my wife does uh, admissions, and she'll come along at times and interview the kids. To come to the school at St. Joe's. Okay, so that and, and we do give out a lot of uh, apps for the the parents, so they can send their kids to St. Joe's as well. Okay, you take applications yes. along. Parents come in and ask about it, and if they're really lucky, they get to meet the illustrious Julie Lepkowski, the uh, or much maligned, however you look at it, and get to to do an interview with her oh, in yeah. order to possibly come to school here. So a few years back, another another neat thing that the Bookmobile did is uh, St. Joe's set it up so that interns from Notre Dame could go out with you on the road. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, it started about three years ago. We get two interns, a uh, girl and a boy, hopefully, and they come during the summer and spend six weeks on the Bookmobile, mm -hmm. and they get to see everything that we do, all the kids, all the adults. And I think it's a good thing for them. Is it? It's a good experience yeah, for good them. Good experience for oh yeah. Okay. And you, you'll be able to know when you visit with them. I can't wait to meet them, and I can't wait to interview them. But for now, it's been very nice talking Thank to you, you, Andy. Yeah, great to to visit with you in this setting. Right. Andy, my good buddy. We've known each other for a long time. I understand you got a couple of new people with you today to introduce to me. Yes, I do, Scott. I have Morgan and Austin from Notre Dame. Kids, I'll leave it up to you. Nice to meet you, Scott. Nice to meet you nice as to meet well. You. Yeah, good to have you guys here. Guys, it's great to have you here with us today. Um, we're, I'm just meeting you for the first time. Andy uh, introduced us uh, just a, a little bit ago. Morgan, Austin, I'm going to have you guys just tell me a little bit about yourselves and what brought you here to St. Joe's. Um, Morgan, I'll start with you. You can kind of give me your your uh, life story in, a, in just this much time. Sounds good. So I'm from Exeter, New Hampshire, and I'm going to be a junior at Notre Dame. I'm studying American Studies in Education. 
and I got an email from the education department about coming here for the summer to do the bookmobile and it kind of just clicked on a lot of different fronts and felt like something that I was kind of like meant to do in like a weird intangible way um and yeah it was definitely like the most unique and meaningful summer opportunity that came across my way so i signed on okay so you were going to do something in the summer and you were looking for something specific and this one for some reason spoke to you yeah i was looking for some sort of service opportunity Mm -hmm. that was kind of like working on the ground going to different communities and actually working in person with people uh and then logistically this one worked out the best too so yeah yeah, it was a lot of different things and you got what you were looking for yeah definitely hopefully and we'll talk more about (laughs) that after we hear from you um yeah so i moved to oklahoma about 11 months ago from kansas and I will be a sophomore next year at Notre Dame studying marketing and American studies. Okay. And so first, like Morgan, I got an email, but not from the education department, but because I'm in the Native American Student Association. Oh, okay. So I am a quarter Native, uh, Choctaw and Creek. Okay. So I've been involved in that with Notre Dame, so I got the opportunity to come here from being Native. And I thought that it would be a good cultural tap in because I've never really, I've never been on the reservation anywhere or yeah. really experienced true native life. Yeah. So I thought, I mean, it's a good experience, good opportunity and probably should do it. What's it like actually being out there? What do you do when you show up? You, you get to experience a lot of different communities. What, mm-hmm. what is, what's that look like when you're there? And either one of you can feel that if you feel compelled. Um, well, I can start talking about like what our job is actually like, yeah. like what we do. So Mondays and Fridays are like our restocking days. Mm-hmm. So we come down here, um, we just get books out of the basement, so put them in the right boxes based on like what kind of book they are. And then we load them up into the, the trailer. So we have like a little system in there where we load all the books up and we know kind of where each section of books is. Mm-hmm. And then... We always need extra books because, as Andy said, we give out, like, thousands of books. Yeah. So we load up the truck bed and, like, full of boxes of books. And then Tuesday morning we leave bright and early out on the road, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we come back for, or come back late Thursday. And what, what is bright and early to, to a 20-year-old? 20, 20 what <laughs> 19. is that? 19. Um, 19? Well, usually it's like eight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have yeah. some miscommunications. <laughs> okay, because yeah. Andy and, will just spitball times. Yeah. Well, sure, and Andy's sixty-seven or something like yeah. that. What is it? What is bright and early to Andy? Like, Probably like five. Yeah, he wakes up like, at five every morning, and then he's there for like two hours. By the time we get there at like seven, yeah. so yeah, but he's <laughs> doing a lot. Yeah. Raring to go. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Man, he's working while he's mm-hmm. getting ready. And I noticed as I came onto campus at seven fifteen this morning. The doors to the the bookmobile yeah. were yeah. open, and I assumed it wasn't you guys. I figured <laughs> no, it was him. No. Yeah, so he's here. He's here getting after it. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, you, he is. What's your experience been like so far? Yeah, basically the same. So we're out on the road from Tuesdays to Thursdays. I I'm from New Hampshire, so I never really had been on a reservation mm-hmm. or had any introduction to kind of like life on the reservation mm-hmm. or anything so it's been really different but we go to all sorts of different places we go to some communities that are really rural like cherry creek yep. which is kind of just in the middle of nowhere Absolutely. and hard to get to yeah. and then sometimes we're in more urban areas like this tomorrow i think it is right we're going to sioux falls mm-hmm. so yeah we kind of get a whole range of experiences Absolutely. there yeah mm-hmm. yeah you'll you will have been to a lot of different places and seen a lot of different things in yeah in south dakota uh when when you go home and mm-hmm. i i grew up in pier which is hour and a half up mm-hmm. the up the river and um same thing. I hadn't had, when I was your age, I hadn't had those experiences. I didn't get the history uh, yeah. taught to me in high school, any of those kinds of things. So when I came to work here, every one of those trips helped inform me as to, to what life was like in Indian country. And to the point where it's probably like Andy now, you you get to know people around the state. They yeah. become your friends. Everywhere you go, you feel, feel that welcoming. But mm-hmm. it's pretty exciting to do that, would you guys say what's your experience been of that to, to go for the first time, to, to, to just see that? What's the feeling out there? Um, so the first, when we, our first stop was Cherry Creek. Yep. And I really didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And I 
we keep journals, and like the first thing I wrote was I'd be lying to myself if I said I wasn't nervous because mm-hmm. I just didn't didn't know what it would be like. I didn't want to possibly offend anyone in any way. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to be respectful and be there to help. And I think Cherry Creek was probably the most rural and poor place we go to in the summer. So it was a great first step in. Mm -hmm. It really got you acclimated quick. Mm -hmm. And it was a great place to be because they were so grateful that we were there. Maybe Mm -hmm. like everyone in the town came and got books. Wow. Okay. Just about everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Which isn't isn't all that many people, but it's Mm -hmm. still... That's pretty amazing to have a hundred percent buy in to 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 you when you show up in a town. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, Cherry Creek was definitely a really good stop. I think it was definitely like a bit of a shock going on because you don't really learn about Native Americans in school, Mm-mm. both in history but also like present day. Yeah. So I really had no idea what to expect. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely a shock, but it was really like a fulfilling experience. Yeah. And Andy is a very good tour guide. Yeah. So he like he knows everyone. He knows exactly what to do. Like he knows the entire route just in his head. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people like prepared us for it, but it was definitely a very like different experience. Yeah, because you can you can get all the information from everybody's got yeah. uh, opinions and ideas that they're going to share with you ahead of time. But mm-hmm. if you were nervous going into it the first time, it's pretty normal because you mm-hmm. don't know until it's your eyes and uh, you know your I would say your heart and your spirit that that's actually taking all that in. Mm-hmm. But I like I like what you both say. I mean, you go in with kind of a beginner's mind yeah. into it, and you go in with a chante wash day, which is a, a good heart mm-hmm. and a humble heart. And you go in and you and uh, and you get to experience that on your own, and you find out that they like you are. Uh, there's a word, Dick J. Wechasha. They're just common mm-hmm. men and women, just like you guys are, just like I am. We we're all we're all one, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah pretty strong experience you know a lot more now at this point three four weeks into this mm-hmm. whole experience than you did when you came in looking back was there any essential qualification uh, that that made you specifically a good candidate for this experience was there anything that you brought to the table that that uh, made this right for you um you can take personally <laughs> personally it was probably um just being native probably mm-hmm. was a good qualification for me because I, I mean, just in a sense, it's like my people, mm-hmm. and it's like that's always what I've thought about. Like, that's my family's very um, native oriented, mm-hmm. and I think besides the willingness to help, just broadly, willingness to help people, yep. I think uh, my want to just have fun has really been prevalent here. I think. Like nothing we've done has been like work. It's been all fun. Yeah. It's been all great experience. Like nothing, nothing feels work related. It feels like I'm here helping people and having fun. Mm-hmm. Did he steal all three of yours, or can you add to that? What did you? Bring <laughs> no, I to th- it? I think that yeah. I don't know. I think he's better at having fun than me. <laughs> no, I don't think <laughs> what so. What do you say? You're you're the fun guy. Of uh, fun. You guy. just try to have fun, yeah. but um. I hear you laughing quite a bit. Yeah. I think you're no, we we have a speaker too that we got for the bookmobile, so yeah. now we have some music going. Yeah. We got a basketball, so yeah. yeah. I think it definitely like helps helps it feel more like welcoming and approachable and everything when we have all this stuff happening. Yeah. But yeah, what qualification do I have? Besides bringing the speaker. Besides bringing the speaker? That was actually Joe, too. Uh, <laughs> Joe Terrell, okay. Joe Terrell, yeah. yeah, he bought us the speaker. Um, nice. I don't know. I think that, I think that yeah, a big part of it is just, like, genuinely enjoying it. And I, like, I particularly like it when the kids come. And mm-hmm. I feel like kind of just being approachable to them and friendly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, helping to, like, break any ice or tension yeah. just so that, you know, people will be less shy. And then they could really kind of, like, take take advantage of the book will be able to get the most out of it when they're not like shy or anything like that. Yes. So I think maybe that, I don't know if I really do that, but I try to. <laughs> I love it. And that's the big thing that you, you try, you know, that they're going to be uncomfortable with a new person yeah. who's coming in at 20. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, uh, need to bridge that gap. Yeah. Right. And if you can take a step in order to do that, that is, that's a big thing that you can mm-hmm. bring to that job. So yeah. I, I love that Waving. answer. 
I really like both your answers. Those are good. But what's a major insight that you've had in the past three weeks? What's a just a revelation? I'll, and I'll start with you. Okay. Um, I think that probably one of the biggest revelations that I've had about this job, but I think that can really be applied to anything. It's just that, like, there's so much more to it than what's on paper. Mm -hmm. Like, we are giving out books. Like, that's in our job description right. and giving out food and stuff. And that's the main thing that we do. But I think that it's also about a lot more, too, like trying to connect with people yeah. and build relationships and mm -hmm. trying, making sure that you're always there to listen to people and try to understand their issues or where they're coming from if they want to talk to you about it. So I think that there are kind of like some intangible parts of the job mm -hmm. that you kind of, like, I think I've gotten a lot out of. So I think that that is probably the biggest insight. Yeah. And you've mentioned that's the second time you've referred to intangibles yeah. so far. And I love it because I, if, if, if you could do a job description for what I've done for 30 years, I would probably write intangible on there. Yeah. And it's, it's what makes that job sweet is mm -hmm. the stuff that isn't, you know, I mean, the books are great. We, yeah. we do that for a reason, but it's the, the other stuff, the relationship yeah. part that's, that's, uh, that's where it counts and um i'd say my greatest sense is something you kind of hinted on earlier is um everyone we meet are just people mm -hmm. just there's nothing too great that separates us from them mm -hmm. we're just at the the bare minimum we're the, we're just people yeah. so i think um just wanting to um do the most for them and realizing and treating them like like not treating them any differently mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and they give you i mean it, here's the thing you go out in the bookmobile and they're you're supposed to give them something right mm -hmm. and i think what you've probably found out is that you've been given as much yeah. through the culture through mm -hmm. the the people that you've met as as anything else which is which is kind of a sweet spot. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Excellent. Is there anything else that you two would like to share with our audience? Anything that just needs to be said? Um, well, there's some stories that we had, <laughs> some some fun moments throughout our job that I think is um, fun to talk about. Can you tell me one? Well, I got two for you. But, okay, give me, um, give me two. So the first one, our first trip, our first week, we went to Bullhead. Mm -hmm. And we had no one coming. There's no one. We were sitting here 30 minutes, no one came. And I saw a, a kid playing basketball. So I went over and played basketball with them. And I was like, all right, we're going to play ping. And we're going we're gonna to place a bet on this. And I was like, if I win, you got to come get some books. And if you win, I have like $3 in my wallet I'll give to you. Unfortunately, I lost, but he also came and got some books. So nice. it was a great, it was a win-win. It was win -win. a win-win, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then um, this last week, we were at um, Parmalee, I think, right? I don't know what your story oh, is. Well, so yeah. We were at Parmalee, <laughs> and um, me and this kid had a little dance battle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. He was, he was like, he was a little shy, and he was like pretty far away, and he was yeah. just doing dance moves, and I just did dance moves back. It was pretty fun. I think you lost that battle, yeah, too. Yeah, I probably lost that one, yeah. too. If we had more room in the studio we i would likely challenge you to a dance <laughs> off here because but we just don't have the room yeah. for it yeah, yeah. He's yeah, a, yeah he has some pretty good moves <laughs> what is what is it like the fortnite dances yeah, they're all fortnite dances <laughs> yeah. okay yeah yeah anything any story you want to share any stories i want um i don't know i feel like there's so so many different things like some serious moments but then yeah. a lot of fun moments yeah. too i think I think one of, like, the earliest memories that I had where I felt like this was, like, the right thing that I was doing was, like, one of... The, at first, our first stops didn't have that many kids, but then I think, like, on our second official day, a lot of kids came by, and I remember one of them specifically. She came in, and she was super, super, like, friendly and outgoing, and... I like kept on recommending books for her and she would take them. And then whenever Austin recommended a book for her, she would say no. And it was really funny. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like yeah. that was like kind of like the first person that I felt like I really connected with on the bookmobile. Yeah. So that one yeah. kind of sticks out to me. Awesome. It makes me really happy to see that this experience has been what it is for you guys and that you took a chance to come out here to 
to our small town and our small school out here and to, to branch out to even smaller communities and, and see some uh, people who are very special to me for sure and to all of us at St. Joe's and and take take their experiences and, and get to know them a little bit and uh, and connect with them and take mm -hmm. that back with you and and uh, I know that you guys will will spread the word that there's something pretty special happening out here and um, we're thankful to have you guys here in in South Dakota and we're thankful to have you here in the studio at, at Hochoka of course too. Thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah absolutely. Absolutely. It's nice to meet both of you. Nice to meet you as well. Mm -hmm. And for our viewers out there we're so glad you've joined us today at Hochoka at the center of St. Joseph's Indian Schools campus where we talk about issues central to Native American education today. Until next time, stay centered.